Hi, I'm Joe, a Warsaw-based shooting instructor. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the operation and characteristics of the Mauser 98 action as used in the Mauser K98K rifles. First, I'll describe how the bolt in the Mauser action works, and then I'll look at some of the features of the receiver and stock. I'll conclude the video with an examination of some of the other iconic features of the action, including the controlled feed system and its safety innovations, such as the third safety bolt lug and gas vent system, so stay tuned. The Mauser bolt consists of the following parts. The bolt body, which here still has the extractor claw in place. Inside the bolt body, you will find the firing pin and firing pin spring. The bolt head screws into the rear of the bolt body and contains the cocking piece, which connects to the firing pin and allows the firing pin to be cocked to the rear on the sear. The safety, which physically blocks the cocking piece from moving forward when the safety is in either the safe or takedown positions, and the plunger and its spring, which stops the bolt body from being able to rotate when the bolt is out of battery. At the heart of the bolt is the striker, which is the simplest means of igniting a cartridge. All you need is a firing pin, a spring, and something to hold it back until you want to fire, which in this case is the cocking piece on the end of the firing pin and the sear on the receiver. The bottom of the cocking piece is held up against the sear, and when you pull the trigger, the sear drops and the cocking piece can move forward under pressure of the spring. On the bolt, the safety physically blocks the cocking piece from being able to move forward. Here we can see the safety on safe, the takedown position, and in fire, the cocking piece is clear to move forward. The safety, when set to full safe, in addition to blocking the cocking piece from moving forward, it also prevents the bolt body from being able to rotate. To accomplish this, this piece here interfaces with this notch on the bolt body to stop the bolt from being able to turn when the safety is set to safe. Here, we can look inside the bolt head and see what the safety does. And then in safe, that part comes in and locks the bolt body. This small plunger engages the same notch on the bolt body as the safety to prevent or allow the bolt body to rotate. When the plunger is forward, such as when the bolt is out of battery, the bolt head and bolt body are locked together. However, when you bring the bolt forward, the plunger is compressed against the receiver, allowing you to twist the bolt body 
and lock the bolt into battery. Likewise, when stripping the bolt, you must depress the plunger to unscrew the bolt body from the bolt head. When the bolt is out of battery, the caulking piece rests against the edge of the bolt body. When the bolt is in battery, the cutout for the caulking piece is exposed. At this point, the sear holds the caulking piece in place, and when the trigger is pulled, the sear drops and the caulking piece is able to move forward and ignite the cartridge. Also, this is why the safety must always be set to the takedown position when disassembling the bolt. Otherwise, as soon as you rotate the bolt head, there is nothing holding the caulking piece in place and it uncocks. And from there, you can't do anything until you cock the firing pin and engage the safety. And now we can get a better look at the receiver and the trigger. The Mauser trigger is very simple. It consists of the trigger, which pivots in the sear. Here you have a spring, and this is a two-stage trigger. To get the two stages, you can see how the trigger rocks against the bottom of the receiver for the first stage, and then levers the sear down for the second stage. When the sear drops, it releases the caulking piece, and the firing pin comes forward to ignite the cartridge. And here we can see how the sear drops when the trigger is pulled. Next, we have the bolt stop and the ejector. In this design, the ejector is stationary and depends on the operator to pull the bolt rearwards with sufficient force to eject the spent casing. Compare that with spring-loaded ejectors mounted on the bolt face that automatically eject the spent casing when the bolt is pulled back far enough to clear the front of the receiver. Looking into the back of the receiver, we can see the ejector, the bolt stop, and the recess for the third locking lug. Looking into the front of the receiver, we can see the feed ramps and the locking recesses for the bolt lugs. On the bottom of the receiver, is the recoil lug, which rests against the recoil lug in the stock. Whenever you reassemble the rifle, make sure that the lug in the receiver is pressed against the lug in the stock. And here we can see the communist import markings I had to have engraved onto the receiver when I imported the rifle. As you can see, the bottom of the receiver is covered in all kinds of stamps and proof marks and who knows what. Turning now to the stock, here we can see the recoil lug that the action rests against. Here we can see the nut 
that the cleaning rod screws into. And at the front of the stock, the bayonet lug sits slightly below the stock so that the barrel doesn't contact the bayonet lug. And now we can get a better look at all the cuts to fit the receiver. And the trigger guard. Here we can see the metal pillar that supports the action and the trigger guard. For some reason, my rifle has a second recoil lug installed, likely to reinforce this part of the stock. The sling mount, the takedown disc, and the butt plate. One of the most distinctive visual features of the Mauser 98 action is the massive extractor claw that hangs off the side of the bolt. The design of this extractor is what allows the Mauser action to utilize the concept known as controlled feed. What is controlled feed? In a controlled feed action, the rim of the cartridge is gripped by the extractor claw the moment the cartridge emerges from the magazine. This means that the movement of the cartridge is controlled the entire time it is in the action of the rifle. Compare that to actions that use the push feed concept in which the extractor only grips the rim of the cartridge when the round is chambered. So here we can see how as soon as the bolt pushes the cartridge out of the magazine, the round is immediately secured by the extractor. If I need to pull the cartridge back, it's easily done. And here on the push feed example, we can see that the bolt does not grab onto the round until it is finely chambered and the bolt is in battery. If there's ever a feeding problem, it's harder to remove the cartridge by pulling the bolt back. Another iconic feature of the Mauser action is the third bolt lug located on the back end of the bolt. This lug is not designed to be part of the regular locking system and nominally should not bear any force when firing. Instead, it is a backup lug intended to protect the operator by stopping the bolt from being thrown out of the back of the receiver and into the operator's eye socket in the event that the primary locking lugs should experience a catastrophic failure. This third lug engages a recess in the rear part of the receiver. And for comparison purposes, the modern bolt may appear to have only two lugs. However, modern systems 
incorporate a third lug by using the bolt handle to lock into the receiver. And we can also see the differences in extractor design and ejector design. The modern bolt uses a spring-loaded ejector, whereas the Mauser bolt uses a fixed ejector. And here we can see on a modern action, the recess that the bolt handle locks into to act as a third safety lug. The Mauser action also incorporates several provisions for safely redirecting gas in the event of a catastrophic failure in the chamber, such as a ruptured case or blown primer. The first are the two gas ports machined into the bolt body that allow gas to flow through the bolt body and out the end. This is supplemented by this flange formed into the bolt head that acts as a gas shield, directing the gas upwards instead of into the operator's face. When the cartridge is on the bolt face, this cutout also allows gas to move around and to the bolt vents. When the bolt is in battery, the bolt sits in this orientation with the gas vents pointing to the left. In addition to the two gas ports cut into the bolt body, the raceway and the thumb cutout used to facilitate the loading of cartridge on stripper clips may also allow gas to vent out the side of the action. On modern actions, they simply drill a hole in the side of the receiver to vent any gas. And now you know how the Mauser 98 action works. In my next video, I'll discuss some of the work I've done to this rifle the first time it was pulled out of storage, as well as some of the problems I've had and other experiences with the rifle that may be of interest to the community. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe, check out my Mauser K98K M98 playlist, and follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash survivewithjoe. Thanks for watching.